you have his peace. So how many of you actually believe that you have his peace? Now, I don't know about you, <clears throat> now if I'm stopped in the street or on the road by a policeman in uniform, I have no doubt whatsoever that he has the authority to do that. If a policeman in civilian clothes stops me, I will want to see his warrant card to show that he is a policeman. I want to know he's got the authority to do what he's doing, that he has the right to do what he's doing. And sometimes, I mean, I spent 25 years in the army, I could hardly ever get anywhere without them saying, ID please. And it was just automatic, you got your ID card out, you showed them, they let you into places. In fact, I was in Germany one time, and uh, uh, one of the, uh, I was in charge of the, the guard that night, <clears throat> and one of my men was on, on duty, and uh, a car came up with some badges on, and he knew it was the general's car, <coughs> And so he, uh, he, he saluted and uh, he waved the general through. The general got out and came into the guard room and said to him, I want that man to have ten extra duties. He said, why is that sir? He said, because he let me through. He did not check my ID. Oh, you need to know that people have got authority to do and say the things they're doing and saying. What's that got to do with peace? Well Isaiah 9, 6 tells us, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. A prince is someone who has a rule over something or somewhere. Charles is the Prince of Wales. He's the ruler, as far as royalty is concerned, as far as the crown is concerned, over Wales. I think some of the Welsh people would argue with that. It doesn't matter, that's his place. Jesus is the ruler over peace. And this happened, this statement was made before Jesus was even born. Would you agree with that? This is back in Isaiah's day. It was before you were born again. Now the thing is, do you believe these Bible prophecies about Jesus? Of course you do, because you've seen them happen in the New Testament. What about the Bible prophecies about you? That you might not have seen yet. My God shall supply all your needs. Jesus has borne all your sicknesses and all your diseases. He's talking about your future. We need to be believing those. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Having read Isaiah 9.6, now we can, we're able to see why Jesus could say, My peace I leave with you, because he's the Prince of Peace. He's not just saying, I'll leave peace with you, he said, I'll leave my peace with you, because, he didn't say this, but he's saying, I'll leave my peace with you, because I'm the Prince of Peace. I'm the ruler of a peace, and if I say that's where peace goes, that's where peace goes. Do you believe the words of Jesus? He said, I give you my peace. And he doesn't give peace like the world gives. Whenever there is peace in somebody's mind in the world, they're thinking about something that's, that everything's going well, but there's often conditions attached to it. You can have peace if you do this. And usually, peace means a lack of conflict, there's no wars going on. Yeah, right. So there's not much peace going on at the moment then. Whereas, I, I can confidently say, there are people in the middle of Kiev, in Ukraine, that have perfect peace. Because they know their Jesus has given peace to them. What's all going on around them isn't peaceful. 
But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's not saying, I'll give you the world's peace, I'll give you my peace, he said. How do you define peace? Well, since I, I was born again uh, some time ago, peace to me has meant knowing where you're going when you die. Whatever, you can do whatever else you like to buy life, anything you like, I know where I'm going in the end. I am going to heaven, I'm going to be with my Jesus, I'm going to be with my Heavenly Father in heaven. And I, that's my peace to me. You can do what you like, that's where I'm going. So, then he says, let not your heart be troubled. That means let not, do not allow, forbid your heart to be troubled. Let not, do not allow, forbid your heart to be afraid. It's your choice whether you allow fear into your life or not. That's why he's saying, let not, you don't let it. You keep it away from fear. You keep it away from being troubled. Why? Because you have peace from the Prince of Peace in you. The fullness, the completeness of peace is in you. There's no room for fear. There's no room for fear. That's when, when, when a person gets born again, the Holy Spirit comes into your life to, to cause you to be reborn. And if the Holy Spirit's there, there's no room for any evil ones. No room. You have the Prince of Peace in you and you have his peace in your life. I want to show you what Jesus is like. You know, some of us have different uh, opinions of what Jesus is like and how we feel about him. John chapter 20, this is just after Jesus had been raised from the dead. That same day of evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. They were scared of the Jews, so they hid themselves. Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be with you. Of all the words Jesus could have used to say anything about anything when he's just been raised from the dead, Hi, I'm back. Hi, I'm risen. Everything. No. His first statement to them was, Peace be with you. Because he could see their hearts were troubled. He could see they were afraid. Not only they were afraid that they might experience the same crucifixion that Jesus did. But thought that was bad enough. And now they've seen him crucified. They've seen him be put in a tomb. And now we stood in the midst of them. I don't know about you. I, I, I personally think that would be scary. You're in a room. You know, you know Jesus has been killed. You know he's been put in a tomb. He's dead. And there he is stood in, the, in front of you. And his first statement is, peace be to you. He thinks, before he talks even about his ministry, where he's been, what he's done, his first thought is for his disciples. Have some peace. Just, just have peace. It's okay. Everything's okay. And do you know that's his first thought for us? In every situation we might find ourselves in, his first thought is going to be for our peace. He's going to want to know we've got peace about what's going on. See, he knows what's best for us, not, our, not ourselves. He wants us to have a life filled with peace. And I think most of us would prefer to have a life filled with peace, wouldn't you not? Yeah? Well, it's yours. You have his peace. You already have his peace within you. But you know, there's something we can do about that peace. You can kind of increase how that peace affects you in your life. In 1 Peter 1, 2 it says, Elect, that's the born again people, according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, and to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now we're going to have a look at another scripture because in the mouth of two or three 
words, everything is established. Second Peter 1, 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through our knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus wants the peace he gives us to be multiplied. How does that get multiplied? Well, first, because we accept and acknowledge the wonderful sacrifice of Jesus that he, he, he gave his life so that we could have all these things in ours. And then, through our knowledge of Jesus, our knowledge of Jesus and our knowledge of his peace. If you don't know anything about Jesus and you don't know anything about his peace, you can't really experience it. If you've never been told and never read that Jesus Christ heals people, you wouldn't be looking for healing from him, would you? Why would you? And with, with his peace, if you don't know enough about the peace of God that passes all understanding, that keeps and guards your hearts and minds, if you don't know enough about that, you won't receive it so well and it won't be multiplied so much in your lives. See, Jesus does not just want to add peace to our lives. He wants to multiply it. He wants to multiply it. Now, which would you rather have when it comes to money, say? 10 plus 10 or 10 times 10? You'd rather have 10 times 10, wouldn't you? Because it's multiplied. He wants your peace multiplied. So you have to do something about that. Your peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Get to know more about him, God the Father, and him, Lord Jesus Christ, and your peace will expand. There'll be more peace in your life. Amen? Now some of you, and, and I'm not going to point anybody out and, or talk to, to anybody or even look at anybody at the moment, I know who the warriors are amongst you. Because I hear you speak. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. When the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, or to rephrase it as some other translations put it, don't worry about anything, I don't know if you're aware, that's a commandment. When he says, don't worry, he's not saying, I suggest you don't worry. Maybe it would be a good idea if you didn't worry. No, he's saying, don't worry. I am telling you, don't worry do it. That's a commandment. And when we take that commandment on board and stop worrying about stuff, there's got to be a replacement. There's got to be another way of doing it if you're not worrying about everything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, always, let your request be made known to God. Instead of worrying about stuff, tell him what you're worrying about and then leave it with him. Leave it there. Don't think about it anymore. You can think about it and say, thank you, I know you've got it. I haven't seen the answer yet, but I know you've got it, so sort it. I understand that. Once you've re let your request be made known to God, now the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds. You see, the Greek word for anxious is merimna which means to separate. How does that work? Worry separates your thoughts from the truth. Worry separates your thoughts from the truth. You start thinking about things and don't check them against the Bible and you'll end up worrying about stuff. I've known people who get severely worried if they've got nothing to worry about. I mean, that's mental, isn't it? Instead, don't worry. Instead, pray. Be thankful.
tell him what you need. Tell him what, what, what would be good for you to have in your life that you don't have now. And casting all your cares, all your worries upon him. And don't forget, the Lord showed me some time ago, the word, when you say it says cast, it means hurl. You write your, it's like writing your, your worries on an egg, especially one of those that Angela brings, you could write a lot on them. Yeah? And you hurl it at the foot of the cross. Can you take that egg back as a whole egg anymore? No. It's gone. It's smashed to pieces. When you cast your cares on Jesus, they are smashed to bits. You can't have them back. You have to leave them with him now. Now the peace of God keeps your heart and your mind. It guards your heart and your mind. Keeps them from wandering off and being separated. And this happens through Jesus himself. This peace is coming from the Prince of Peace himself. You know, the Prince of Peace is giving you his peace, which you can have any time you want. And this peace, it says here, can never be fully understood. It's too big. It's too massive. It's too vast. We've got scientists who are, who are spending all their lifetime studying the universe. You're never going to know all about it. It's not going to happen. It's too big. Somebody once said, you know, so where does the universe end? I said, well imagine there was an end to the universe and there was a great big brick wall was built all the way around it. What's the other side of the wall? There isn't an end. There's no end to the universe. And there's no end to his peace either. No matter what situation you are in, there is well enough peace for you to keep your hearts in your minds. In Romans 4.17, it says the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, because you've just been talking about what you eat and what you drink. But it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the definition of the kingdom of God is, when it says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. When it talks about being born again and giving your life to Jesus, you come into the kingdom of God, that's what you come into. Righteousness, peace and joy. A lot of years ago now we had a, a, a Jehovah's Witness gentleman call at our door and uh, I said, oh how can I help you? And he had one of the magazines in his hand. He says, can I talk to you about the kingdom of God? I said, sure, but let me ask you a question first. Can you define the kingdom of God? And he went, excuse me? I said, can you define the kingdom of God? I went, no, not really. I said, well, the Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost? Can you pray in tongues? He's running down the street because he didn't want to know that because it's contrary to what he's been taught to say they preach the kingdom but they don't know what the kingdom is a lot of people talk about the kingdom in their churches they don't know this the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost three things a third of the kingdom of God is peace a third of the kingdom of God his righteousness, which is our right standing with God. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, he bought and paid for our sins, so we can now come boldly to his throne of grace. That's our righteousness. And a third of the kingdom of God is joy. Tell your face that. Joy. Righteousness, peace and joy. That's the kingdom of God. I didn't see any troubles in there, any worries and cares in there. Didn't see any sickness or disease, didn't see any lack. Just righteousness, peace and joy. Hallelujah. If you've got righteousness and peace and joy, everything else is already taken care of. Keeps us, the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. He lives in us and keeps us peaceful when we let him. Let me finish this scripture here in John 16:33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. 
in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. But I want to see this. I don't know if you've ever, any of you ever read the Passion Translation, but this is the Passion Translation of that verse. Wrong one. And everything I have taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you. I will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world you will experience trouble and sorrows but you must be courageous for I have conquered the world. Everything about the world has been defeated by Jesus if we let that truth settle into our hearts. As was said earlier, yes troubles may come but they can't stay because no weapon formed against you can prosper. Jesus didn't say you won't have trouble, what he, just, what he did say is you'll have peace. There will be peace at all times in your heart. When the troubles come and you've got peace in your heart, you just go, it's okay, it'll all disappear in a minute. I'm not going to worry about it, it'll all be gone soon. Can't stay because Jesus has given me his peace. And that's where we're at at the moment. Do you like having God's peace in your life? Can you imagine Jesus being anything except peaceful? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Jesus sitting down one day with his disciples? Oh my goodness, I don't know how we're going to manage this. Where are we going to get all this food from to feed this lot? I don't know. Look, oh, the boat's gone out. How am I going to get to that boat now? I don't know. No, he didn't worry about anything. He fed the 5,000 and Jesus he fed the 5,000 and God multiplied it for him. And if the boat had already gone, he just walked across the water. Nothing phased him, nothing at all. You have that kind of peace in you. I wouldn't try it on the sea. That bit I wouldn't try. But you have that kind of peace in you. When troubles come and troubles will, you just say, it's okay. Jesus is in charge. He will be sorting this out. I'll let him get on with it. Amen? Now, the thing is, to have this peace, you have to be sure you have Jesus. Would you agree with that? It's that several times he says you can have my peace, but you have to have knowledge of him. You have to know him. You have, he has to be in part of your life. So, <clears throat> can I make a suggestion right now that I'm going to put a, a prayer up there, a salvation prayer, and I'd like us all to say this prayer together. And uh, if you, it's the first time you ever say it, you've said this kind of prayer, please talk to me afterwards, okay? So let's just say this together and let Jesus come into our lives. Amen? Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus, that he went to the cross and died in my place. I repent of my sin and I receive you, Jesus, as my Saviour. Thank you for forgiving me and taking me out of the world and receiving me into your kingdom. Come in to my life today so I can be born again. Fill me with your love and help me to follow you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Now as I said, if that's the first time you've ever prayed that kind of prayer, come and talk to me afterwards and we'll do a little more prayer. Father, I thank you today for your blessing on our lives your peace that keeps our hearts and minds and I thank you your peace will continue to bless us throughout this day and the rest of our lives because your Bible said so in Jesus name Amen, Amen. thank you Jesus Hallelujah <laughs> Amen